What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to do the first mod on my BMW K75. Let's get started. How you see this bike is pretty much how I bought it. The only things that I did off camera are um, I flipped this mirror from the other side. I put it over here. Uh, the previous owner had it down here, which looks cooler but I couldn't see anything because, well, I have big arms and this they were just pretty much blocking everything. So I flipped a mirror over from the other side and put it facing up. Everything's good to go there. I added this GoPro mount right here. It just clamps onto the bars and it works pretty well. I already did a little test. You guys will see that in another episode. And I pretty much use my phone here on this quad lock mount to show me my speed because the speedometer doesn't work. So that's another thing. I didn't do too much to the motorcycle because it runs and drives and I just want to keep it that way for a while until I do a whole bunch of mods this winter. <laughs> but um, I just want to enjoy the bike a little bit before I tear into things. So I've been trying to stay away from touching stuff on it. Technically the first modification is this vertical plate mount. The previous owner had it horizontal and when I went and did the title transfer, I ended up putting a vertical plate. I got a vertical plate at the DMV. Today, I will be replacing this LED taillight. The guy I bought this bike from put this taillight on here, and unfortunately, the LEDs are dying for the, um, the taillight portion. The brake light works, the turn signals work. But there's no taillight. They just started getting, like the second day I owned it, it was just flickering and then they went out. So, um, <clears throat> I didn't tell you this, but I did ride the bike a whole bunch just like that, just not in the dark. I'm gonna flip this world's smallest key here to the on position so I can show you. There's absolutely no taillight. It's supposed to be on right now. It was lit up um, when I purchased it. Not very bright, but it's pretty much gone right now and I'll show you the this motorcycle has really weird turn signal uh, buttons and on the controls here these are OEM you have your high beam low beam um, up here is just the uh, cold start can't really call it a choke but I guess it just advances the throttle for the cold start there is the left turn signal you click that on and it comes on the right side has the right turn signal, you click that on for it to go on. And to cancel either side, you push this button up, right? So weird. But as I was riding this bike, I realized that when I use my turn signal and I take a hard turn, it actually cancels the turn signals out. I'm not sure if that's just like something that's jacked up with this bike or if it actually has canceling turn signals, but it's kind of nice. So yeah, that's how you uh, turn the turn signals on and off. Some of the things that you may have already noticed is this integrated LED uh, headlight and turn signals. The headlight's really bright. I haven't really ridden it in, in like pitch black dark, but there is the low beam. There's actually like three LEDs up here. The high beam is right there. Let me try to flip that on here for you. There's the high beam, which keeps the low beam on and turns the high beam on, okay? And then the turn signals are built in, okay? And then the other side is obviously the left, okay? So headlights are pretty bright. Turn signals work, they're integrated. At some point, um, this had a, this is a, a COSO uh, gauge. The TAC works. Oh no. Uh, the bike just caught on fire. That sucks. Holy shit. I got that on camera. Okay. The bike just caught on fire. Awesome. Right underneath the fuel tank. I'm going to take care of that, and then hopefully I get to film again.
Good thing this didn't happen while I was riding. This sucks. Well, I never would have thought that I'd be filming while my motorcycle catches on fire, essentially. I mean, it was, it was almost there. It was smoking really bad. I have the fan on running right now to try to clear some of the smoke out. It's hard to tell in here because the LEDs, but you can actually tell. I don't know if you can tell the smoke just billowing out of my shop. It's bad. This thing smoked for a while. I don't know if I cooked the battery. Hopefully the ECU is okay. But from what I can tell, it's the ignition wires. Um, I have it tore apart already. I guess that's just my destiny. Bikes have to be tore apart all the time. I took the seat off really quick and pulled the ECU and I undid one of the battery terminals here. Uh, the battery doesn't seem like it's hot or anything, but I'll show you what I found. So the smoke was billowing from the battery, obviously because that's shorting out. Look at this ignition wire. What the hell? This is not what I planned this video to be like. <laughs> my first video with my newly acquired BMW is it almost catching on fire, but I guess it's good content. Time to tear this biatch apart. All right, to make things worse, I realized that not only is the harness behind the cylinder, the lock cylinder and the ignition, completely fried, but I followed the wire up here, and that's fried as well. So my lesson for today is, if electrical problems appear, have a beer. All right, I'm gonna pull the fuel tank off and see what the damage is with the wiring harness. To remove the fuel tank on these guys, there are two rubber grommets. One's here, one's on the other side. Before you remove the tank fully, there are two fuel lines, one in the front, one in the rear. And uh, those gotta come off. All right, got both of the fuel lines disconnected. This one's all right, but what in Sam's shit is this? Okay. Looks like I will be replacing that fuel line. All right, let's pull the tank off. The arcing and the short that happened actually put a mark on the bottom of the fuel tank. I'll show you right there so talk about some luck I don't know man but at least this thing didn't go up in flames it looks like this may be wiring for I don't know it goes all the way up to the front headlight so it's probably the headlight wiring stuff this box does not look factory. Maru? Okay. Um, I can tell you right now that we have some wires that are unplugged. We also have some pinched wires that are pinched pretty bad. Like that one right there. So, I'm going to have to address all that stuff. No loose connections so far, and everything looks fairly clean and dry in here, so that's that's a good sign. All right, the right side of the bike where the ignition is mounted, there's some electrical tape here. That's never good. Probably shouldn't tape that like that. Um, you can definitely tell that there are some fried wires right there. 
they melted and the entire harness is melted all the way around and it loops into here and it's also melted here very crispy and melty right there I guess I'll start taking everything apart I'll match up the wires and we'll see if we can get it uh, fixed up here you can see that from the ignition where I believe that the uh, short started all the way back through the wiring harness where this crimp connector is burned up all of that stuff all the way into the harness in here back up through here and the secondary harness that goes up to the headlight that's messed up too I believe it all started right here where this um, ignition relocation is the back of this um, ignition where the positive wires are touched right there on the frame and uh, that's what I believe caused the problem I'm thinking I'm not sure if I want to put that um, ignition cylinder back on the bike so I'll either do like an RFID or something similar until I get things sorted so all right guys it's been a couple of days and I racked my brain and got a couple of things in order before I decided to work on this again and I think we're gonna do all right cross your fingers for me because if the ECU is fried or if there's any kind of issues within the ECU because of the electrical damage then I'm gonna be in trouble otherwise eh. First thing I'm going to do is cut the harness back as far as I can on this and see if I can um, locate how far the damage is. One thing with wiring is if it gets really hot and brittle, it'll cause damage not only right away, but sometimes down the road. So just because the insulation looks okay doesn't mean that the wire is okay underneath it. So I'll keep cutting back. Um, if I have to replace an entire line of wires, I will. The strange thing to me is that the ignition wires are burned up, but then it comes back out of um, underneath the seat and goes up and it burned up the headlight um, harness as well. First thing on the agenda is to go wire by wire and figure out exactly how far it's burned up down in this harness here. And then I will be essentially just cutting each wire where it's burnt and then uh, either piecing it into a part of the harness or just making a whole new thing. This is an ignition wire harness for this bike and it's so melted, awfully melted, that it's time for this to go. So I may just use a basic uh, guide. Let me pull this out here. Look at how bad this is. This just burned. I can't believe it didn't actually go up in flames. I'm gonna use this as a basic guide and follow the ignition wires and where they go. The colors really don't tell me much here and I already looked at the wiring schematics and they don't match. So at some point somebody extended some stuff or added wires. Upon further inspection, I realized that the damage went all the way into this main box down here that has all the relays, all the switches and it's gonna be a nightmare because Essentially, I have to unbolt every single component and get the wiring harness, the big wiring harness that goes into everything. I have to remove it and trace how far back the damage is and then rewire everything from scratch. So I'm not going to record it. I'm not going to do like, you know, I'm not going to speed it up and all that stuff. But I will show you here with the camera in a second um, what it looks like and how unfortunate this situation is because... If you know anything about these old bikes, they are finicky as it is, but once the harness is burned up and you have electrical issues, typical BMW, um, things just go downhill from there. So let me show you what this looks like here and we'll go from there. I decided instead of taking the tray out, I was gonna just remove every relay and wire this way, which lets me get to some of the issues that are in here. I found some burned up wires Mainly, it was a hot um, positive right here. Um, as, as far as the bike modifications and why I'm removing the physical key and lock cylinder and ignition cylinder is because this is a relocation kit that the previous owner put on there. However, um, the fuel tank sits here 
and I want um, side covers that match here. I ordered those in carbon fiber, but they're going to take a while to get here since they're coming from overseas. So this unit has to come off anyways. I'll be unbolting that and removing it. Um, on, on top of that, the ignition lock cylinder sitting here is bad juju because the frame was rubbing against <laughs> some positive wire. All right, so this is super temporary, so don't judge me. I do have the main wire, power wire, soldered in with the connection where it was um, jacked up at. I have the accessory wires, even though this looks a little funky here, I have the accessory wires tied in. Essentially, this means that as soon as I connect the battery, the key is to the on, uh, both accessories on. So this eliminates the key completely. If this works, then the lights should come on and um, the gauge cluster should light up and all that stuff. I'm really hoping that it works. It's the first time I'm trying it. Let's uh, connect that ground wire on the battery. And as I do that, let's see what happens. We have light, we have gauges, and there's no smoke or anything funny going on. A lot of the ignition wires are exposed, so I'm trying not to move the bike too much. I'm going to try to turn it on. Let's see if it fires up. All right, it looks like we're good to go. The reason it didn't start, obviously, is because I don't have a fuel tank hooked up. And I think uh, I'm a happy camper. It looks like the ECU is good to go. Now I can turn everything off, disconnect it all, uh, get it back up on a center stand, and continue fixing the wiring harness. Super simple component. This unit here controls everything. Here is the receiver for the um, RFID key. This is what the RFID key looks like. A lot of the non-name brand or a lot of the units that are made in China will have this little blue key. Nothing wrong with that once again. I think I'm going to laser etch something on here if I end up using this unit. So how I hook this up essentially just to show you guys is I have the unit sitting over here. It comes with this little indicator LED, which is really cool because if you're running any type of uh, indicator lights on your bike, this one here has them built into the gauge, which I'll be taking out. But if you have any type of indicator lights that you want to hook that up to, you can hook, you can cut these wires and hook up the indicator light or just put this indicator light somewhere where you can see, hey, the unit is powered on, okay? I'm gonna put the run position on my bike, AKA my power supply. That's on, stating that I put it on, okay? Here, once I get close with this, it's going to show me this LED is red, showing that it is powered on. And then if this light comes on, that means that my ignition, AKA like me turning the key on on the bike is on. I'm going to take my little key here and I'm going to touch it to this pad. Actually, it looks like proximity is about, I don't know, four or five inches. And that came on. Now this unit is powered up. You can see the little LEDs on and it gives my ignition, AKA my light here for testing purposes, it gives it power. Now the bike has power and you can hit the run button on the handlebar and everything will start. Super simple setup. These guys are very inexpensive. I might even look up the part number on this. I don't remember where I got it, honestly. Um, and you guys can get it. This is a cheap Chinese made model. This is something that's gonna be temporary on a bike until I have to tear the whole wiring harness apart. To turn it off, you would Hit the off button on your handlebar if you have it wired that way. Or in our case here, I'm just gonna flip this. And then it powers everything down. And that also powers this unit down and it won't drain your battery. So make sure that when you guys are hooking it up, you're not just hooking up the positive and negative from this unit straight to the battery and be like, oh, I got an ignition. And then, you know, a few days later, your bike won't start because the battery's dead. Well, I'm a happy camper because if the EC was fried or there was other damage where relays were messed up or something like that it would have been a bigger electrical nightmare than it already is so at least everything's squared away where i can pull the tank off test which wire is which and what turns what on and then i'll wire that in with the rfid tag and then i guess it's reassembly time here i have a relay and it essentially what it does is it switches the power constant coming from the battery over to the ignition without 
having a large amperage draw or burning up the RFID box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this in. You have to run a ground, a switched power, constant from the battery, and then we're going to run one one lead out to um, to our RFID box, and then I'll obviously test everything beforehand. Then heat shrink and crimp all the connectors. And then, gotta put this entire mess back together <laughs> so I can ride the bike until I'm ready to do. Really don't like how this is. It's tied in, there's this bulky thing here that keeps hitting when you turn. There's literal duct tape here on some of the wires and I don't know why there's stuff just hanging out everywhere. So once the bike is to a point where I can essentially put the tank back on, I'm gonna tackle this and redo some of that wiring stuff so at least it's neater. Tuck everything in, zip tie it, and then we'll put the fuel tank back on. All right, so I put the fuel tank and the seat on just to get an idea of where things are going to be placed as far as the RFID receiver and the switch. I put a master kill switch right there. That way everything can be off all the time and nothing is powered at all. Even when you flip it on, nothing happens, at least not visually, everything is off. My receiver is going to be mounted right there. Right now it's just kind of sitting there. And here is the indicator LED. So you guys can see as soon as you touch that, the light comes on, the headlights come on, the dash and everything come on. The cool thing is the dash can be shut off with this switch up here. And if you want to switch everything off, you just kill that. If you try to turn it back on, nothing happens until you touch it with the, oops, <clears throat> until you touch it with the RFID key. I think this is a great spot. I'm right-handed, so uh, the switch being on the right-hand side and also the receiver um, makes sense. So basically what I'm gonna do next is figure out exactly if this is, I'm gonna sit on a bike and see if this is an easy spot for me to put the RFID tag when I'm starting it or if I need to move it somewhere else. So I know it looks like a royal mess right now and everything's gonna get cleaned up before I put it back together. But um, I do have the main box for the RFID, which is sealed with black silicone. So that's a sealed up unit now. I do have this relay right here. And the reason we hook that up is because we send the signal from the RFID box to this. And then this has a solid constant power running from the battery that's also fused. I put a fuse in there. It's right here and then this moves the power to the ignition wires which are now crimped and underneath here another thing that i did was take the fused accessory uh, signal that comes from the fuse box and i ran that to the rfid unit so now my accessory uh, fuse will be for the rfid specifically so if something happens i can just replace that fuse and then the 30 amp fuse down here is my ignition fuse now Pretty cool, everything is fused, it's on a relay, and it works as it should. I crimped and heat shrunk all the connections. I just have to uh, cover them completely, like this one. And then it's reassembly time. This has been kinda uh, a pain in the ass to do. One thing I did find buried in the harness is an accessory 12 volt plug that you can use for like a cigarette lighter, a cell phone charger, or something like that. And it's long enough to reach my uh, quad lock up here. So what I may do, and I'm really considering doing this, is run this unit and power the quad lock. Uh, I just have to buy the, um, the plug-in piece that fits here to charge my phone. So then that'll be done. I'm not going to do heated grips on this unit, at least not yet. But this right here is fused and it's long enough. So I think the quad lock is going to be powered. <clears throat> all right i told you i'd have everything cleaned up there is the box that has all the components in here obviously this wiring here is going to be cleaned up even nicer because um, i'll be taking everything apart again once i redo the main harness and i do the m unit from moto gadget as you can tell right here there is a seal that you put the wires through i did that very carefully that way this creates an airtight seal here. 
I just wanted to show you where I put the LED. It's right on the side of the box here. So when the seat and the fuel tank are on, whenever you do the RFID ignition, you can see a red light is on and it stays on until you flip the switch down. Pretty cool.